They often say making a mistake is one of the best ways to learn. Wouldn't it be great to learn without having to make the mistakes? Stick around to find out more on today's video. Hi, I'm Sean from Lens Cove Lessons in Boating. There's one thing that's very true and that there are hundreds of little things that can go wrong when you're doing your boating. There are, however, some really common things that we see that go through our marina and service department on a regular basis. So on today's video, I'm gonna to touch on five of some of the most common mistakes that boaters make the ones that cost money and the ones that take you off the water. And we're going to review those so you never have to make them yourself and save that money and save that time. So on today's video, we're going to cover fuel contamination issues that cause a lot of grief and a lot of money, leaving your lower unit stern drive trimmed up and off to the side, not paying attention to your temperature gauge while you're out on the water and overheating your engine, miss hooking up your battery or boosting your battery incorrectly, not spending the extra money to have a proper GPS navigation unit or at least a good set of charts. If you like today's video, make sure you throttle that like button, subscribe to get on board for more of these type of videos. One of the most common things that we see through our service department is fuel contamination. And that fuel contamination can come from environmental issues, moisture in the air. It can come from contamination issues, old fuel that sits around in your tank, or it can come from using the wrong fuel and putting in a low grade or 87 octane fuel and having it break down while it's in your boat. It's such an important topic that we made a completely separate video on it. And you can find that here. We'll also put it as a link in the description below and at the very end of the video. But essentially what happens is that fuel that breaks down or has some sort of contamination in it gets into your fuel system, clogs things up, and then causes you to completely break down, often needing an expensive tow-in. And then you have fuel system to repair, either a carburetor to rebuild, a fuel injection system to clean out, at the very least a fuel filter that's clogged, and often we need to drain the tank to make sure that old fuel's out. So absolutely fuel and putting the wrong fuel in or putting the fuel in incorrectly can cause you a ton of money. So it may be intuitive for you to think, I wanna get my engine out of the water because particularly in Florida or other saltwater environments, a lower unit can corrode if it's left in salt or brackish water. And that's true. The best way to do it is to have an outboard so you can trim it out completely or hopefully put it back on a trailer or on a lift. If you are in a northern climate or a non-saltwater environment, what's probably also true is there are other animals in the water. And if you leave your drive not centered and not down, you expose all of what we call bellows, so the U-joint bellows, the shift cable bellows, and the exhaust bellows, along with the, some oil lines and shift cables, to the environment. And if you have critters, minks, muskrats, otters, or any other small varmint that likes to get in there, they will sometimes make a nest and they'll chew those rubber components. Those rubber components are actually keeping your boat afloat. So by trimming the drive up and or leaving it off to the side, you are letting animals possibly sink your boat and causing thousands and thousands of dollars of damage, environmental distress, and possibly write off your boat completely. One of the worst things that can ever happen at the marina here is that I wake up in the morning and I walk down to the dock and I see a boat on the bottom of the lake. It is a horrible feeling for a marina operator and it's way worse for a boat owner. There are many reasons that your boat engine may overheat. You may inadvertently start it on land and rob the impeller of water. It may get weeds or other debris around the intake and starve your impeller of water. Or over time, you just may get debris and other contaminants in the engine, and that may slow down the water flow to critical components. One mistake you can avoid making is not paying attention to your engine temperature gauge. Most marine engines will have a warning system. There'll be an audible alarm that will go off, a long beep or a series of beeps, depending on the engine. You may also have a gauge that has a warning light on it. In the automotive world, we call that a service indicator or a warning. But almost always you have a temperature gauge on your dash and it will show you the engine temperature. And if it gets out of range, 
typically on an IO engine that might be above 107 degrees Fahrenheit, you can cause a lot of damage. You can cause engine, internal engine damage. You can cause damage to your exhaust manifolds. You can warp heads and damage head gaskets. And realistically, a very quick overheat is often not a big deal, but a prolonged running with an engine that is above temperature specification can cause long-term catastrophic damage. So do yourself a favor while you're out on the lake enjoying the rundown, particularly when you start up your boat and run it at the dock or at the ramp, watch for that temperature gauge and see if it climbs too quickly or over specification. And while you're out on the lake running around, every once in a while, glance down on it, check it out and make sure you're not getting too warm. The battery in your boat may be one of its most critical components. Without it, you're going nowhere. Your engine doesn't start, none of your electronics work, it is a very vital piece of equipment. And from time to time, it will either discharge because you haven't used the boat in a long time. You may have left a switch on, a light, or something that brings the battery voltage down too low, or your battery may just be getting old and need replacement soon. So when you hook up a battery or you boost a battery, you wanna make sure that the positive red terminal is correctly hooked up and the negative black terminal. If you cross these over and mistakenly, even for a split second, mix up these terminals, on a newer engine particularly that has a computer or ECM or ECU, it is very possible for you to fry that computer. That reverse voltage will completely shut down your engine computer and can cost thousands of dollars of damage. It's also very dangerous because you will cause a spark and in a boat there could be fuel fumes and you could have an explosive situation. If your battery is dead and you don't have a service team at a marina or somewhere else to give you a hand with it, be very, very cautious when you're going to boost or replace that battery and make sure you have the battery terminals on the right ones. It's so important we made another video here that you can watch on battery maintenance. I know when I drive anymore, I get addicted and rely heavily on ways. It really does save all kinds of time looking at maps and trying to find your way anywhere. The same is true in your boat. Make sure you have a good set of charts or make sure you have a GPS installed which has the electronic charts on them for the body of water you're in. And you can also get a Navionics app on your smartphone. Whether you have an Apple or an Android, they're very inexpensive to download. And although the waterways can feel very open and you've got all kinds of places you can boat, it's also very true that there are obstacles under the water that you can't see. And those things, rocks, reefs, shoals, stumps, or generally shallow areas can cause some real safety issues if you impact them at high speed and also extremely expensive repairs and damage. If you happen to hit a lower unit at 30 to 40 miles an hour, that damage can cost you 10 to $20,000 in a heartbeat. Not only would you damage the propeller and the lower unit, you could crack transom assemblies and even do structural damage to the transom of the boat. If you're in an inboard boat, you can rip the shaft out of the bottom, you can bend the strut, you can bend the rudder. Invest a little bit of money in making sure you know where you're going. It'll save a lot of grief and a ton of cash. Your local marine store should have lots of recommendations on what charts are available. Common ones are Navionics, Seamap, and you've got great GPS units from Garmin, Simrad, Raymarine, Hummingbird, and a host of others. Really, even the paper charts are better than nothing, but don't go out onto any body of water blind. Some marine service departments would like you to not heed this advice because these repairs are very profitable. However, what we realize is that when you have mishaps like this, then they cause significant financial loss and also loss of time out in the water. It can really make boating an unenjoyable activity. So take a few precautions, use a bit of common sense, you'll save some money, have some fun, and keep the dollars flowing out of our service departments. Thanks for joining us on today's Lens Cove Lessons in Boating. Make sure you subscribe to get on board for more of these type of videos. If you like today's video, make sure you throttle that like button, get out on the water, have fun, and stay safe.